Hey everybody, it's Jim Johnson. Welcome back to my channel once again. I am the project manager and line editor for the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game and the Captain's Log solo role-playing game, both published by Modifius Entertainment. And I am back with you right now for another unboxing video. Uh, this is not specifically Star Trek Adventures related, uh, but it is certainly Star Trek uh, because I am a big Star Trek stan. I love all things Star Trek. I have a package that I got in the mail the other day from the Zon, the Amazon. And this is a, an item I've had on pre-order for a while, and uh, it finally arrived. So let me go ahead and just crack this open here for you. I'm, I'm thinking, knowing what this is, I, I probably should have figured out another way to do these videos in terms of uh, unboxing so that you, actually, you can actually see uh, the product a little bit better. Uh, gosh, this is going to be tricky. Oh, here we go. There we go. Uh, these big ungainly box for <laughs> a book. And this is a big honking box for, uh, for just a book. Like, this is a big, thick... Um, box and there's there's no packaging in it of any kind there's no bubble wrap there's no uh, paper good job amazon all right um so titan titan books is a uk uk company if i remember correctly and they are coming out with all kinds of great star trek uh non-fiction books so i would say if uh, if you're a big star trek fan in this day and age um titan books is one of the one of the strong publishers out there right now publishing all kinds of interesting and different Star Trek nonfiction in terms of like uh, costume books and art books and uh, reference material just all kinds of great stuff I say go check their stuff out and uh, that's what I've got here tonight uh, they've been working with some of the different artists that have worked for Star Trek over the years and uh, and this one I've got this is Star Trek the art of Neville Page Neville Page uh, so one of the one of the great key artists for Discovery and other Star Trek stuff. So there's a beautiful hardback. Uh, this has got to be, I don't know, 11 by 14, 11 by 16. This is a nice big heavy hardcover uh, shrink wrap here. So you can see that's the uh, the Klingon. Uh, I believe that's the Klingon torchbearer on the front there uh, from uh, Discovery. He's also done some work on. Uh, uh, Picard and I think he did some work on the JJ verse as well uh, so there's that beautiful hardcover uh, again get this off of Amazon it was on sale pre-order price I don't know like 40 bucks or something $40 uh, check your local Amazon check your other stores whatever uh, you can probably get it at a price that's good for you I'm gonna try to carefully crack the shrink wrap on here so I don't mess up the the book itself and I'll just uh, page through it just a little bit here again this is where I was saying that I need to maybe think of another way to do unboxing videos for books because like if I want to show you the interiors it's going to be really awkward to move this thing around and not crash into my mic and not crash into the stuff on the table and uh, so on and so forth uh, but anyway if you are a fan of Star Trek and especially if you appreciate good artwork and I tell you I do appreciate good artwork especially because uh, being the project manager of the um, RPG we use a lot of art in our books and um, that art often is commissioned new right so we use a lot of new art commissioned from artists all around the world uh, but sometimes we have access to paramount's art archive in s certain quantities depending on what they've been able to upload to it and that we can access and we can use all that art as needed and we drop it right into our books so if you go through our books sometimes you'll see art that we've commissioned and then you'll see art that other artists have made on other Paramount products or other Paramount movies, television shows, etc., etc., and uh, sometimes we can use that as well. So anyway, there it is without the shrink wrap. It's a nice matte finish with some gloss on the on the text. Very nicely done there. Um, I'm going to very carefully take this dust jacket off. I tell you, even though I love books and I love publishing, I am just not a fan of dust jackets. I've never ever really figured out the point of a dust jacket. They are they are paper. They are fragile. They, they, they ding easily, they tear easily, they're a pain in the butt to keep on the books <laughs> when you're reading. Uh, sometimes you can use the little flap as a bookmark, but even then that's kind of awkward. And just looking at this one, so this is a really nice heavyweight, um, heavyweight, uh, end, uh, not end paper, but a dust jacket. And you can see there's, a, there's actually a, they actually put a, a UV varnish on the artwork here so there's this is the inside uh, inside flap and you can see that's a picture of a klingon and there's actually a you know a, gl a gliss a glistening on that gl that's a uv coating on the on that little part of the 
of the of the face and then a um, little bit about the author a little bit of uh, UV on the about the author nice little touch there and then on, on the back um, yeah they did it on the back too so you can see the back covers got some different images each of those images has a a little a little coating on it as well so it differentiates it from the matte black background or i guess that's maybe a dark gray kind of blackish um and all those it just makes it makes the the images pop a little bit more um but again you know not a fan of dust jackets i mean and not i mean there's nothing wrong with this dust jacket this is a perfectly serviceable dust jacket i just don't like them because uh, they're just they just take up space right they're just wasted wasted paper in my opinion um, now this is something i appreciate like sometimes uh, some some book companies will uh, will make a book and the dust jacket where is where the the money is right that's, that's where all the great design work is and often you'll see the back the, the 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 actual cover the actual cover of the book itself is usually blank like if you look at a lot of um a lot of fiction these days a lot of a lot of hardback fiction the um the matte cloth covers are just black and then th there might be embossing on the on the spine with the title and the author name and stuff um but sometimes companies do an actual design on the cover and i appreciate that i actually appreciate that more than the dust jacket so i, I like that they actually put some orange art on here with the with that coating again there's a there's a uv finish on that to make it stand out a little bit uh the spine work really nice uh they got the they got the uv on the logo star trek logo and then on the on the text and then on the back you've also got the other half of that uh that design there in fact that might be a different design um yeah it's a different design so this is this is like the that looks like the the torch bearer and then that on the other cover that's something else i'm not quite sure that is it. it might be another Klingon but uh, I'm not quite sure um, anyway so you know just as a as an art book I think given my druthers because I don't care about it being a first edition I, I don't expect to ever sell this I might give it away someday but I don't think I would ever like I, I'm not buying this to be a collector's item to go make money off of someday I'm, I bought it because I want the art and um, I might just toss the I might just toss the 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 dust jacket. I haven't decided yet. I might I might just try to keep it safe. Uh, anyway, so here's another nice little touch. Uh, sometimes companies will not do anything with the end papers, which I think is a huge waste. Uh, you got to do something interesting with your end papers, whether it's just a, a decoration or a design motif or a pattern. Uh, in this case, they did a pattern. They've got some different skulls here. Let me see if I can get in a little closer on that. Some different skulls, different types of alien skulls that were probably in Picard's. Uh, the alternate Picard's um, office, or maybe this might be some Klingon stuff here. No, these actually look like the skulls that are from Picard. Uh, there's a Borg, there's a Gorn, there's a human, some other stuff in here. So I'm going to guess this is probably from Picard, but uh, just, you know, neat design, something interesting to look at. A little, little dark, <laughs> that's all good. Uh, and then you get into the actual book itself. And again, again, this is where I should have really tried to come up with a different way to design this but like in the inside full color interesting artwork uh, some text telling you about the artist uh, this is a foreword by Alex Kurtzman telling telling you about the artist uh, I'm gonna guess this must be uh... oh, okay this is a this is a sculptor one of the sculptors from the art department uh, working off the sketches that um, Neville Page must have created to make a maquette or a, or a 3d image of the of the art very cool it's just amazing this process like i'm not an artist but i appreciate the art the work that goes into it uh this is really nice so a really nice chapter opening uh full page chapter one introduction with the starfleet delta very clean very very nice i really like that uh, typeface and uh attention to detail there's a nice piece of art there uh, if you can see that a little bit um, again i'm trying to be careful i got access to the mic and I'm trying to give you <laughs> enough shots of the pictures and the, and the art on the inside so um, I, again this is probably not for the casual fan I don't think casual fans are really going to care that much about the artwork although they should because it's just like this is where this is where the visual designs of a series or a movie come together like for a for a TV series or a movie like of course the script the writing is where it's really built you know in terms of like the story and the characters and the acting and all that stuff but it's the um 
it's the it's the artwork that is really going to help shape the look and feel of the um, of the film or the or the TV series or whatever. And um, here's another. This is the the Star Trek film. So this must be his work on uh, on the different JJ verse with the big uh, the big colorful alien there. Really cool with all the different uh, mouths and teeth and fangs and stuff going on there. Certainly imaginative, which I appreciate. I think, um, you know, at its best, a Star Trek RPG is, is limited only by the player and the game master's imaginations, right? You can imagine literally anything you want because you don't have to worry about an art budget or a CGI budget or anything. But when you are doing a film or you're doing a, a TV series, you, it's going to cost you something, right? You, you've got, you, can, you can make some imaginative creatures, but you're still limited by what you can program in the, in the time and budget that you have. So whereas the, you know, the human mind uh, collectively with your group of friends with an RPG, you can imagine literally anything you want because there's no budget, right? You can just take all the time you need and you know, imagine the most outlandishly science fiction-y creature you want. Um, <clears throat> and then you got something like this, which is, again, fantastic. I don't want to say but, but, but again, you, you get, you're limited by art, time, budget, money, CGI capabilities, you know, processing power, etc. There's only so much you can do with a computer compared to the human mind. Um, it's gotten better, certainly. I mean, I mean, the special effects, cinema, cinematography, um, CGI, all that stuff has improved, like, you know, a billionfold since uh, the old days of Tron <laughs> and, and uh, uh, you know the old the old uh, you know even even Star Wars um, was cutting edge back in '77, right? But now here we are, you know, 2023. Things have gone way beyond that, which is just astounding, right? And it's it's a feast for the eyes. Um, oh, that creature actually had a name. The the Heng Hengraugi. Hengraugi? Hen Hen Graugi. Okay. Well, there you go. It's a Hen Graugi. I didn't know that. Did you Did you know that? So, shoot me a comment in the below. Tell me that you knew that this was called the Hen Graugi. Because I sure didn't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, I don't want to. I don't want to drag this out by flipping through a book that you can't see. Uh, and plus, this is twelve minutes. So you know, here's some of the. Uh, Nibir Nibirans from uh, um, one of the Star Trek JJ uh, verse movies. Uh, really cool design. Um, they didn't linger on them too long, but uh, I just liked the look and feel of the creatures and the eyes, the all black eyes, and the the the, the um, outlining on the face there. I mean, great world building here, and the yellow fabric that just really stands out nicely against the red, um, the red plants and the. Um, and the white skin. So I think, you know, if nothing else, this was just imaginative design and decorations and stuff. So I, I need I need to rewatch the JJ Verse movies actually now that I think about it. I think just to appreciate another aspect of Star Trek that um, I haven't spent a lot of time with. Uh, so Star Trek Discovery, season one, there's a, uh, I think that might be, uh, uh, I don't remember now. It might be Vogue, it might be, uh, um, Takuma, I, I, I have to go back and look at my uh, um, variations. Yeah. Anyway, so I, again, I could I could flip through this for hours, I'm looking at all the wonderful artwork. Um, Discovery season four. So he's done, he's done some work on Discovery. He's done some work on Picard. Um, Kelpians. So he worked a lot on Discovery season two, which tells me that um, you know his his work influenced Strange New Worlds, right? Certainly. Uh, some designs for Tellarites. So if you're looking for some, some design ideas for your Star Trek Adventures Tellarite character or your Captain's Log Tellarite character, check out this artwork. Look at those, look at those great beards, the white beards and the mutton chops and stuff. That's really cool. Um, anyway, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, so anyway, if you are a fan of Neville Page's work, if you are a fan of Star Trek art, if you are a fan of science fiction art, Check this out. I'm going to spend some time with this one. I'm going to add it to my collection of other art books that I've got on the shelf here. Um, I just I love looking at this stuff for inspiration uh, as a game master when I'm thinking about new creatures to create for my campaigns or for even for Star Trek Adventures. Um, we do have uh, now in the Lower Decks campaign guide we have a, a full chapter on creating your own creatures. 
Uh, there's also guidance in some of the other books about how to create beasties. Uh, the lower decks book, uh, NPC section has a bunch of NPCs and creatures in it. The core book has creatures in it. Other books have creatures in it. Um, I'll finish off with this. Um, anyway, so uh, if you are into Star Trek art, you want to check out some cool art, and you want to encourage the arts, um, go check this out. Again, Star Trek, The Art of Neville Page, Neville Page, uh, with Joe Nazaro are the writers. Again, this is a Titan Books production, and uh, I encourage you to go check it out. So thank you. This is an unboxing for that. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed to my channel already. I'm grateful that you're here. And I hope you keep coming back for interesting content like this, like other unboxings, uh, more Star Trek adventures to come, more Captain's Log to come. Hope you enjoy your, uh, your time today. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great week. And I will talk to you all next time. Thanks so much.